if you've been doing your code on the micro bit or you've done some code before sometimes when your code doesn't work the way you think it should it can feel a bit like this but maybe that's not the most productive way it gets through quite a lot of space stations if you carry on doing that so instead of doing that you should think about Debugging it. Uh, maybe not those bugs. Um, debugging it? No, that's not right either. Debugging it. So debugging it is uh, a programming kind of term that basically means trying to figure out what's wrong with your code. But rather than just kind of randomly getting cross about it, um, it's learning how to take it apart bit by bit and put it back together again and try out different experiments and to use certain tools and techniques until you figure out what bit of your code is wrong. So I'm going to go through a few general techniques for how you should um, look at fixing your code and we're going to look at a few tools specifically on the BBC micro bit that can help you do that. So the first way of doing it is just to write out um, information to the screen that helps you figure out what's going on and we'll show you how in a part of your program you could write out that you've actually reached that part of the program or you can actually use it for looking at errors in some languages. The other more advanced way is the microbit has something called a serial port and that can communicate with other computers. So when it's plugged into your computer um, using some of the microbit tools and languages, you can write out special kind of output to a special window that you can see what's going on. So that's what we're going to show you how to do. But before we do that, I just want to go through some general tips um, from my experience of programming over many years now of how I try and um, debug and some great ways that have helped me. So the first one is to just don't get cross. Don't do a Kylo Ren. Um, it doesn't help. Sometimes you just are going to get cross, but take a break, go and do something else for a bit and come back and look at the code later. You'll probably spot it in five minutes if you do that. Get someone else to read your code with you. Um, when we're doing professional program, we even do something called pair programming, where we work alongside another programmer that at the same time, both working on the same bit of code. So we spot mistakes before they happen. Um, but if you're looking at it, and you can't figure out what's wrong, go to someone, talk them through what your program is meant to do. Quite often they can spot something that's been staring you in the face for hours. And the last one is try and only change one bit of code at once. If you change lots of things and take out lots of bits of code all in one go uh, and it works, then you won't know which bit of code fixed it, what was the problem. So try and take out one bit, test it, one bit, test it. You have to be quite what's called methodical. You have to do little bits by little bit and do them in a, in a sensible order rather than just throwing it all up in the air and, and getting upset about it. So that's our kind of general tips for debugging. And now we're going to show you how to do some um, very specific debugging on the BBC micro bit. So I've written a simple program here. I'll just talk you through what it does and then I'll show you um, how we can debug it because at the moment it doesn't work. So I've got two variables at the beginning of my program. I've set variable a to be equal 1 and variable b to be equal to 5. Then down here I've got a block that says when the a button is pressed over here, if a is greater than b, so if it's a larger number than b, then play this tone. And if I click play right now, we don't hear a tone. It's not working. So the first thing to do is obviously I could read through and maybe I'd spot the mistake. But if I don't, what would be good to try and figure out is where at least my code is getting to, to check that it's doing what I think. So we're going to start off by writing out something. So I'm going to take this show string, I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to say, this is going to check that, that at least the button is even um, doing anything when I click it. So on button A pressed, show the string. So I'll check that. There you go, button A pressed. So it's getting at least that far. So now we're going to put another string in. And write something like got here, whatever you really want that you'll know is here. Now we're going to run our code again. So button A pressed. And then we expect it to write got here. No, nope, nothing at all. So we know it gets as far as this, but it doesn't get as far as this. So that's a good indication that the error is in between those two blocks. 
that it got here, but couldn't get here. So something must be wrong with the beginning of this if. So if we look at the statement here, we can see that it says if a is greater than b, then go through. Well, we set a to be 1 and b to be 5, so a is not greater than b. I must have got it wrong. I must have meant is a less than b. Okay, so let's try that again. But before I do that, if I keep, I know it gets to this button a pressed. If I keep this in, it's going to keep going through that, even though I know it gets to that bit. So sometimes when you're debugging like this, it's good to take out bits once you know you're definitely getting to that bit and leave in the bits you haven't proved yet. So we knew it was getting past um, A pressed, but we didn't know it was getting to here. So we'll leave this in. Okay, let's press the A button. There we go. Got here. Now, hopefully it'll play the tone next. There we go, it works. So we debugged our program successfully there. Just make sure, as we did before, that when you finish debugging a piece of code, you take out your debugging. You don't want to carry on showing that string if you gave the program to someone and it started showing it. You just want a program that now does this. The moment we press it, it immediately starts playing. That's exactly what we wanted. That is the simplest way to debug on the BBC Microbit. You can do it in all the different languages. We've just shown you how to do it in the block editor. But you're basically just writing out to the BBC Microbit screen um, at different points in your program, so you can guarantee it's got to that part. Obviously, if the program's more complicated and it's got lots going on, you might end up right at the beginning with quite a few of them that said, got to part A, got to part B, got to part C. If you have the same message coming out at different places, that isn't going to tell you which one it got to, so have a think about that as well. But that's the simple way. Now we're going to move on to the more complicated way that you can, in some of the editors, uh, output somewhere else as well as the screen. So you've probably already found uh, on the Microbit website that there's more than one editor, but actually there's even more editors than you can find on the Microbit website, and there are two ones especially worth a mention. So the first one is the editor at codethemicrobit.com. You can see the web address here at the top here, just codethemicrobit.com or one uh, word. And this is an editor by Microsoft who also supply a very similar editor on the Microbit site, the block editor. And this is just kind of an extension of that. It's going a bit further. It has a few nicer extra features. And one of them is very useful for debugging. So I've written the same program that we had here, setting our variable A to 1, B to five and I've got the same mistake in here and I'm going to show you how to debug in here. Now we could do the same thing, we could write out to the screen, um, but that gets quite tiresome when you actually do it on the real microbit device having to look at it all the time and sometimes only your errors will show on the microbit device because maybe the emulator isn't behaving the same way or maybe you're doing something with a sensor that doesn't work in the emulator so you need another way of doing it. So it's a little bit complicated and it all involves something called a serial interface. So a serial interface is a standard way of communicating between two computers, and it's used in lots of different things that we use every day, and you may never even notice it. Um, and so we need to set up in this editor the serial interface, and there's a couple of ways of doing that. If you go into the help uh, on um, Code the Microbit and go and have a look at the serial help file, which is in references... Go to serial, and then just click on this link here that says serial and tell you all about the serial device. I've actually got it open in a separate page here, it's a little easier to read. And here it tells you how about the serial, it'll explain to you what serial is, but it will also show you how to get it set up on your computer. And there's a quite easy way, there's actually an extension for the browser called Chrome, which is the one I'm using here at the moment. You can um, click on this link here, it will open up this page here, and you can install that plugin for Chrome, um, which will help you, and I'll show you how in a moment. This isn't the only way of doing it. You can also install something called a terminal emulator, a way of reading serial information called TerraTerm. And I'll show you that in a moment anyway, because we'll need that when I show you how to do this in Python. But the easiest way in the micro code, the microbit editor, is this extension for Chrome, um, which if you haven't got Chrome in the web browser already, um, you can just go to Google and type get Chrome uh, and it will find it for you. Um, if you're on Windows, you've got to do an extra step. If you're on Mac or Linux like that, um, you can just install the extension and get going, as we'll see in a moment. On Windows, you have to install a special um, driver uh, for the Microbit board, and it's this link here. So if I open this up, 
it will show you where to download the driver. You download and run that on your computer. And then when you've done that, you've installed the extension and you've installed that driver, you need to shut down Chrome and reopen the Code the Microit website. Okay, so I've got that all installed here. Um, we can the program's running at the moment. We press A, it's not doing anything. So now we're going to try and put some debugging in by using the serial output. So if I go to serial, lots of different things in here. The one we're going to look at is serial write line. We're going to drop that here and say button A pressed. Okay. Now the code the microbit editor um, automatically runs your program all the time, so I don't even have to press run. Um, and if I press the A button, you can see down here the output from the serial comes down here. I didn't have to wait for it to scroll across the screen, which is sometimes quite annoying waiting, it just immediately appeared here. So we know like before that our code is definitely getting to that point. So let's put another one in. Find serial again, right line. It will compile straight away. Button A pressed. Still not getting to our thing. And you can see each time I run the program, it's um, telling me that it's been pressed more than one time. You can even download this information or stream it uh, to some online services from the Code to Microbit editor. But that's a bit beyond what we're looking at today. So let's fix my code. It should be less than, not more than. It should automatically update it. There we go. It cleared out this. Press A. We've got here. Got A pressed, and we can hear our tone. So you see it's a lot quicker to get that kind of information out uh, and be able to see it right here. But you can also do a lot more complicated information out. If you're looping through things, you can write lots of information. Perhaps if you're looping and reading a value from a sensor, you can write lots and lots of it very quickly out to the screen without having to use the micro bit. It's a bit more advanced way of writing information out. So now we're going to show you how to do the same thing with the serial output, but in a different language called Python. If you've looked at any of the editors on the BBC Microbit main website, you might have actually seen this, the Python editor. It's another web-based, works in your browser editor. Python is a more advanced programming language. And for the BBC Microbit, there's a, a smaller Microbit specific version called MicroPython that lets you do a lot more powerful things than you can do in some of the block editors. It still has its limits, but it's a really, really good editor once you start to learn how to put code together. But you'll see, you just write out the code. You're not dragging and dropping like before. Now the browser-based editor is great, but if you start to get into this a bit more, there's a better editor um, that's built for Python on the micro bit called Mu. So if you go to Google, type in MU Python, you'll find this link at the top. It says GitHub. GitHub is a place where developers share their code and their programs. So if we open that up, we'll come to this page. If you scroll down, it will tell you about Mu and what it is. It will tell you how to install it and where to download it from for Windows, for Mac, and for Linux. And for Windows, as we did before on the Code the Microbit site, we have to install this special driver, um, which you can download and run and install, but on the other operating systems, you can just use it. So you've downloaded and installed Mew, you've downloaded and installed the Windows driver if you need it, and now we can open up Mew, and this is what my one looks like. It looks very, very similar, but it runs in its own program, it's not in the browser, and it has a few more advanced features, and I'm gonna show you two of those. So I've written the same code as before, um, I've got A, a variable that's set to 1, B, a variable that's set to 5. Um, in Python, you kind of do a loop while you're checking for a button to be pressed. So while true, if button A was pressed and A is greater than B, then play some music. Um, this is actually the same kind of code that you saw in a minute ago, but this is telling you to play the first C in, in, on a piano and for play it for four um, kind of beats long. So it's very similar, but you've got a bit more power in here for what you can kind of do in flexibility. So the difference here as well with both the online Python editor and this one is there's no emulator. I can't see anything on the screen here. I actually have to run this all on my micro bit. I don't actually have a speaker on my micro bit at the moment, so you won't hear the music play. Um, but I don't have to copy the file across like on the other editors. I can just hit this flash button. So I click this now. It will compile it and copy it straight onto my micro bit, and then it will tell me when it's completed. It takes a few seconds, but I don't have to do anything. There we are, it's finished. And it will just bring up uh, the micro bit window. There we go, so that's added to it. Um, 
obviously we know at the moment this code is broken and it won't work because A is bigger than B. So let's imagine we're trying to fix it and figure out what's going on like we did before. So in Python, um, the way you write out the serial is by using a command called print. So that's how I can do there. So when the button's pressed, print out the serial button A was pressed. Let's make that an uppercase, we see what's going on. Um, now I need a way to actually see that serial interface out, like we did on the Code the Microbit website, we need a way of viewing it. And this is this um, button up here called REPL. So REPL stands for Read Eval Print Loop, which is as meaningless to me as it is to you. Um, but if you can go and read about it on Wikipedia here if you want to, um, it's basically a way of kind of being able to do tiny little snippets of code and test them out uh, on the micro bit. So you can actually press this button here, it will open up a thing down the bottom here. If it warns you that your Python, your micro bit isn't connected, then just make sure you've actually got it plugged in. Um, but it, if it comes up like this, then your micro bit is connected and working. And, and you can actually execute little Python bits of code here if you wanted to. It's a good way of testing things out. I'm just going to show you how it writes out the serial interface today. So with our code here, we're also going to put another print in to check that it got here, like we did before. There we go, I just copied and pasted it. So if I flash that to my micro bit, wait a few seconds. There we go. And now if I press the button on my micro bit, the A button, you'll see down here it will write out button A was pressed. If I press it again, it will carry on writing it out. But it's not getting to got to here, and we know why that is, we know that I wrote that wrong. It should be A is less than B. So let's flash that again. It's really nice having this flash build in that I don't have to copy a file around all the time. It can be a really quick way of doing it. There we go. If I press the button now, button A was pressed and got to here. I'll show that again. So once you understand Python, and you may not look at this and really understand what's going on, but when you start to learn some Python, you'll see it's actually pretty straightforward. But this is how you do the serial writing out and be able to debug on the Python. And that's kind of the end of our debugging today. So don't forget that some really key tips is don't get cross when you're trying to debug. Go and take a break. If you get stuck, try and read out your code to somebody else, and it will probably make sense to you when you read it out, or it will make sense to them. And the last one was don't try and remove or do more than one bit at once when you're debugging because otherwise you won't know what bit fixed it. And that's it. Enjoy. Go fix some programs if you've broken them. And I hope you have a great time with the microbit.